What's up, it's Cody, welcome back to the channel. Now today we're running part two of how to run our Facebook advertisement campaign. Now if you didn't see the first video, I got it linked down below. Be sure to go watch that first part of this because it's so important in the second step. Once again, I'm joined by Anthony from Simple. Now Anthony's gonna show us how to finish setting up our Facebook ad campaign to not only reach more people, but reach the right people. And that's the very, very important part. We gotta make sure that we're reaching the right audience. In the description down below is a link to Anthony's course, Academy by Simple. Now in Academy by Simple, you're gonna learn how to market your music even more effectively and grow exponentially. I've personally signed up for this myself and I've gone through the whole course and the information there is absolutely invaluable. So I'd highly recommend that you go check it out for yourself. And in the addition to all the great content that you're gonna get from Academy, you're also gonna get the opportunity to have a one-on-one -on -one experience with Anthony and learn directly from him through his consulting at a discounted rate. So if that's something you're interested, be sure to go check it out down below. I mean, it's worked very well for me and as you saw, Anthony knows exactly what he's doing and he does a very, very good job at it. So be sure to check that out. If you do find a video like this helpful, be sure to hit the like button down below, make that little thumbs up button turn blue. Really helps out me and my channel and Anthony and Simple and helps this video get seen by many more people. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. So after we created our or found our target audience, you know, whether it was through historical data or through new data that you, you and I would come up with essentially, um, before we go in to create an ad, let me talk a little bit about the different um, goals and um, which again, the goal for this campaign is just to reach as many people as we can. So we're gonna be posting a music video, but one thing I wanted to talk about really quickly is that when you go to create an ad campaign through Ads Manager, um, when we talk about the different objectives, it's it all kind of really depends on what you want people to do. Um, usually the easiest way to get started with advertising is by selecting a video views campaign, because you pay a little bit less to reach as many people as you can. Um, that will usually translate to people actually clicking on your smart link or whatever to actually stream your music on Spotify. So the goal for this campaign is going to be video views and we could 100% go through and call this video view campaign. And then click on continue. So we selected our goal for this campaign as video views and you're probably confused by now because Facebook's ads manager looks like a gigantic spaceship. Uh, but just to clearly define, um, you know, these three steps or three, you know, parts to an actual ad campaign is at the campaign level, which is what we are in currently, is typically where you select your objective, which the objective for this campaign is going to be video views. We just want to reach as many people as we can in order to get views to the video. Now, when we talk about the ad set level, this is where you would, you know, select your target audience. But we already did that, which is great. Um, as far as workflow goes, this is why I typically prefer working backwards, starting with the target demographic, whether it is a saved audience or something more advanced, such as like a lookalike audience or a custom audience based off of previous page engagement. You can go in and select all of that without you having to define all of that directly through here. So again, for workflow purposes, all I would have to do is just click on use saved audience find the pop punk test one, and then that's it. That's a huge part of building out an ad campaign is building out your audience, but you already did that before. So you're already miles ahead of the next guy. So I wanted to talk a little bit about placements, which I think that's always like a really confusing part to most musicians. So when you go in here and create an ad um, and you have it on automatic placements, automatic placements is just, basically where is the ad going to be placed, right? Which if you think about Facebook as a platform and where they have content, they have content on news feeds, they have content in your stories, um, and then they have their audience network, which is like, you know, if you go onto an app and you're playing a game, some of those ads are either from Google or they're from Facebook. That's just their network of different places that they serve ads in. So we'll get back to this in a little bit. I know I'm jumping around, you know, everywhere. But when we go into create the actual ad creative, which is, you know, uploading the video and things like that, usually what people do is that they create an ad. And what I mean by this is that they upload their full music video or their clip directly right here. And what this is going to do is that basically you're creating multiple different posts per placement. But we don't want that because what we want to do is create a music video advertisement promoting the music video 
and have all of those views go to that one single video. Because when you go here and you just upload the full video, right? Because I can go ahead, create add, and then I can add a video and upload it. Because I have automatic placements on, it's going to post the video to stories. It's going to post the video to Facebook, to Instagram, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm going to create basically 10 different posts for that one video. And let's say all 10 of those different posts get 100 views each. That's 1,000 views that are just going to be spread thin across 10 different posts, essentially. So what we want to do and what you actually have the capability of doing in the ads platform is that when you get to the stage of the ad setup, you can click this drop down to use an existing post. And now our page isn't new nostalgia music, right? So make sure to actually select the correct page. Uh, but for example, when I type in uh, the band page, I can use an existing post. And when I go to select posts, I can select a post from Facebook or Instagram for video views. Like these are grayed out because these are not videos. So I can go in and select any post that has been published or scheduled. We haven't scheduled our post yet, which we'll get to in a second, but all you would click on right here is scheduled posts, right? So what we're gonna do, we're gonna pause, we're gonna leave this here um, as far as building out the ad campaign. And what we're gonna do is actually schedule our video. So this is Facebook Creator Studio. If you're not familiar with it, it'll get familiar in a second. All you have to do right now is just click on create post, upload video, then we'll click on choose. If you're on a Mac or Windows, I don't know what you guys do. It's foreign to me, but <laughs> this will seem familiar in just a second because I'm sure if you've ever uploaded a video directly through your Facebook page, um, it'll you know bring this little thing up. This is like Facebook Creator Studio's UI. Um, so. This should look familiar to you if you've ever uploaded a, a video to Facebook. You can play around with Creator Studio later on. But what we're going to do is just actually schedule our post to be published, um, which right here for the description of the video, what I find most bands do more often than not is that they just say, hey, we released a new song or check out our new single, blah, blah, blah. You should not do this. What you should do is create something that's going to make sense to cold audiences, which cold audiences are people like me uh, who have never heard of you before. Um, so the way you write captivating posts is, you know, just like the kind of the tried and true method of creating copy that converts or just things that people will react to are just a lyric snippet or a blatant statement about what the song is about. How long do you normally make those? Uh, typically lines like this and kind of like a, you know, other thing you can do, like I was saying, like you could 100% put like, you know, rinse and repeat by Bellevue is out now, but at the end of the day, it could be rhetorical because it's like when you see the post from an artist, like it has their artist name there and we just said the song title. So in this case, I personally want to put that, uh, but you still can. It, it's just up to you at the end of the day how you'd like to put it. And then uh, tags, keywords, usually I just stick with, um, you know, just the genre. So pop punk. You could just do alternative rock music, rock music, or you can add a new tag. I don't know. Um, I don't really see a benefit to them, to be completely honest. Um, I haven't, like, I can live with or without publishing those. So, I mean, it, it's up to you at the end of the day. Um, the title, this one I want to talk about a little bit later on. Uh, for now, we can just put um, rinse and repeat now. Uh, but as far as like publishing and things like that, the video is still uploading. Um, when we go right here to publishing, we have the option to publish the video now or schedule it. Um, so the song and video comes out tomorrow. So that'll be September 25th on a Friday. So yeah, we'll schedule this post out and it looks like it just finished uploading. So we'll go back to the thumbnail, which right now it's an auto generated image um, or we can upload a custom image if we wanted to. You could go ahead and fill that out later on. Um, but yeah, so as far as like the publishing options go, we have it all scheduled out. So we'll click on schedule. Cool, so now this is the video post that is scheduled for tomorrow at 9 a.m. So then when we go back into here, 
we might have to refresh this. So this is called the side pane. So you're just going to click on the little X to close that. Um, and then the last time ads manager was updated was seven minutes ago. So what we're going to do is just click on refresh table data. And then what we're going to do now, again, here's the whole campaign structure, like the campaign, the ad set and the ad. So what we're going to do here is just click on edit under the video view campaign. We're going to go back to the ad creative part of our campaign. And again, we're probably working backwards, but we'll go through and clarify everything really quick. Um, but as far as our ad creative, again, for our ad setup, we're not using, we're not creating an ad, we're using an existing post. So we're gonna click on select post. And as we saw earlier, we can click this drop down and look for scheduled posts. And here it is. So what we're gonna do is just click on it, click on continue. Then if you get an error, don't worry about that. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, but the biggest thing about these Facebook feed ads and why I was saying, you know, back in Creator Studio that the headline was pretty important. Um, so what we're going to do really quick is go back to edit the video just to clarify what the title of the video was. So if I click on here, click on the edit post. Right now, the way the ad is composed is just the video creative, right? There's no link for the DistroKid hyperfollow. So we have our smart link. And again, you, if you use DistroKid, you've probably seen the hyperfollow before. Um, you can lead people to your website or you can use a different smart link service. Um, but what we wanna do is add a call to action or add a button to this. So what we're gonna do is just click on add button. And then we'll just paste this here. And then we'll update the post. So as opposed to having a link in the actual you know, text description, you can add a button, which this goes again with the whole title of the video. Whatever title you had on your video is what that button is going to read. So for example, it's gonna say rinse and repeat out now. You can change it to something else if you wanted to make it more direct. Uh, Cause again, like when you're actually uploading the video, you'll you'll probably want to say, you know, rinse and repeat official video, but that's not gonna make sense for someone that sees this on the feed. Um, so that's just a little trick that I do, just change it to rinse and repeat out now, or if you wanted to, you know, put an arrow pointing to the button, you know, you can do whatever you want. Usually I just leave it like this. So we have selected our scheduled post. So again, just to clarify, we go to change post or you know, you select the actual post that's scheduled, all's good. What we're gonna do now is take a step all the way back and start from scratch on, you know, clearly defining what the campaign ad set and ad are. So again, just to recap, the campaign level is where you select your campaign objectives. So again, the objective for this ad campaign is video views. We wanna get as many people as we can to check out the video. All this other stuff, don't worry about it. The next part is the ad set section. So the ad set is where you select your target audience and your placements. So for example, if we create a post for Instagram, which is probably not gonna be the full music video because you can't advertise IGTV videos. If you have a 15 second or 30 second video prepared, um, you can create an ad campaign or an ad set for that specific uh, clip and placement. So for the ad set name for this, what we're gonna do is pretty much use what we used for the target audience, which was pop punk audience test one. And then daily budget. Right now, this is set automatically at 20 uh, Canadian dollars. So um, usually I have a saying that's $5 per day to make the fans come and stay. So I usually just start out with five bucks per day. Um, is that cool? Or would you rather set a budget for the lifetime? Uh, no, five a day is cool. Cool. And uh, just so, you know, whoever's watching this uh, lifetime, this is just if you want to say, I don't want to spend no more than, you know, $100 in a given month or whatever. So you can set an end date. I don't, I just usually let it run automatically. Um, audience, again, we used a save audience, saved audience rather than creating a new one. Again, you can just ignore the entire beginning of this video and build out your target audience here. But again, uh, as far as workflow goes, I like working backwards through the saved audience and just plugging it back in through here. Um, and now we touched on this a little bit. By default, it'll be set at automatic placements, but we don't want that. We don't want this post to be duplicated on multiple different you know, platforms. So what we're gonna do is just click on manual placements. 
And then as you can see here, you have the four different platforms, which again is Facebook, Instagram, Audience Network, and Messenger. We're gonna turn all of these off except for Instagram. Again, this is just for workflow purposes. I usually just turn them all off. And then I just go manually and just select Facebook newsfeed, turn off Instagram feed, and then turn on Facebook video feeds. You don't need any of these other ones um, because again, what we want to target or what we want to do is send all these people that we're targeting to that main post that we have scheduled. Because if I'm showing this ad on different apps and sites, I'm not going to have all those video views going to the same posts that I just have scheduled. It's going to create multiple different variations of that particular post. And I don't want that to happen. I want to drive people to my posts on the news feed and the video feed. Hence why, as far as placements go, I just have the video feeds and the news feed selected. Again, if you were to schedule a post for Instagram, all you would do is just duplicate this, select Instagram feed, and then uncheck these two, basically. So for where you want the ad to go, would you recommend having them as separate targeted ads? So have one just for Facebook and one just for Instagram? Correct, yeah, because unless you don't really care about social proof or social engagement, you can you know just ignore the whole use existing post and just create an ad and throw it out there. Uh, but let's say, an ad does really good on Instagram and it gets like thousands of views, you want people to see that. So why not turn a post that you have on your actual profile into an advertisement? Because if you just create an ad in the back end of ads manager, you can't really push it out um, as an actual post. Like people won't see it. Only people that you're paying to reach will see it. Um, whereas if you have an existing post, turn it into an ad, it's kind of like a snowball effect. Anyone else that sees it, will then you know, see the social proof or want to see you know, what, what the big deal is, essentially. So we have um, at the ad set level, we're good. Um, then the ad creative, again, this is where you either create an ad or you select an existing post, which for our instance, we selected an existing post um, that was scheduled. So again, now, as you can see, the two placements we have are just feeds and video feeds alongside with our button. Um, and yeah, that's, Pretty much it. Uh, just the one thing to note when you go back to the video view campaign, like the campaign level, or actually, sorry, the ad set level, this is where you can set the start and ending time. So I don't want the ad to start right now. We want the ad to start tomorrow. So what we're going to do is click on start date, 25th, and then time, it says your time now. So what we're going to do is change this to 10 a.m. Okay, so we made sure that this was going to go live on September 25th, which is tomorrow. So all we have to do is just click on publish and then we're good. So what we're now entering into is the review process where Facebook um, will actually review the ad and then say, yeah, it's approved or no, it's not approved. Usually if your ad gets disapproved, it's because your song has bad words in it or if it's just showing you know, really violent images or videos, it won't get approved. But for most music artists, you should be fine. Um, you know, If you're a rapper or something, or if you have explicit lyrics, just don't post the full video, just use like a 15 or 30 second clip that is clean and you should be good. But yeah, it's scheduled, it's gonna get approved and it should launch tomorrow alongside when the post goes live. Okay, awesome. Now, so to test out different audiences, how would I go about creating an identical campaign to that? Yeah, so right now we're in the campaign level, which again is a bird's eye view of all campaigns that you have going. Um, and when you click here on the actual campaign, you'll then be taken to the ad set. So right now we have our audience test one. So let's say you wanted to test out a different audience, for example. All you'd have to do is just duplicate this entire ad set, because again, work smarter, not harder. Um, instead of starting from scratch with a whole new ad set or a whole new campaign, all you're gonna do is just click on duplicate. Don't touch any of this stuff, just click duplicate. And then what you can do is again, kind of work backwards and create your target audience and the audiences, or you can change it directly here. Um, each ad set is going to have its own identical or its own unique daily budget. So if you're cool with spending $5 for one ad set and then $5 for the other, just leave it as is, or you can adjust accordingly. And then now here, you can either edit the saved audience or you can create a whole new audience and then just plug in whatever other interests you wanna test out. And then again, after they run for a little bit, 
you can then go back in and say, okay, uh, we got this many results out of this many people we reached, which one is more you know, expensive or cost efficient over the other, and so on and so forth. Okay, awesome. That sounds super easy. Yeah, it's uh, simple. It is simple, definitely. All right, so that has been how to build an ad campaign. Now, what are some things that users could get from signing up with Simple and signing up for your Academy? Yeah, so Academy is a monthly subscription which walks you from start to finish on building out a release campaign, as well as a little bit more advanced strategies for Facebook and Instagram ads. The beautiful thing is that it's growing just as our company is. So whenever we onboard new clients or find new things with uh, Facebook and Instagram ads, is that we actually create videos, um, you know, whether they're 10, 15, or up to an hour minutes long. Um, and we update our um, Academy users with different tips, tricks, and case studies that we've been doing through actual real use artists. So we work with a lot of artists that are independent, we work with some assigned artists, um, and more often than not, if we find a strategy that works, we'll make a video on it, upload it to our Academy users, and they'll be able to see what exactly it is that we're doing that's been working or has been a proof of concept. So I've been in your shoes before as a musician, so I understand that not every musician has thousands of dollars to throw at a PR company or has thousands of dollars to throw at a music marketing agency. So I created Academy to be a budget-friendly option for musicians who are more so of the DIY mindset. So if you're watching this, you're probably the guy that handles all the business stuff in the band, the guy who learned the ins and outs of Reaper or Pro Tools, the guy who knows his way around Photoshop. If you can do all of that stuff, you can 100% work or find a way to make Facebook ads work for you. And the cool thing about Academy is that you actually have access to our Slack channel. So that's where we have 100 plus users that go in there and talk about, you know, what strategies they have been using that have been working. If you need feedback or need help finding your target audience, you can just message me directly. Um, you basically have an open inbox to people who know exactly what it is that they're doing. So um, tons of value. And again, it's only 27 bucks per month. You can cancel at any time. But if you, you know, stay signed up with us, um, you do get access to a couple of other perks, such as 50% off one-on-one -on -one consultations. So if you want to do something like we just did, you know, together, um, you can get 50% off of that exclusively through being an Academy member. Awesome. Well, that's great. I mean, I've been through the course myself, and there's a lot of very, very valuable content. And you preach a similar message that I do on this channel. So I really like everything that the course is about. And there will be a link to it down in the description below if you want to go check it out and sign up for the Academy by Simple. Yeah, definitely. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for doing all of this for us, Anthony. Um, it's been so valuable on how to create a good ad campaign and how to move forward with it. And I really think that this is so valuable and such a great way to go about marketing in, in, in the modern age of the music industry. Yeah, definitely. Like I say, making good music is hard, but marketing music shouldn't be. It's simple. <laughs> All right, so there you have it. You should be all set to set up your own Facebook advertisement campaign for your band or for your new release. Once again, a huge thank you to Anthony for hopping on and showing us exactly how to create a Facebook advertisement campaign. I really think this is something that's gonna benefit not only you, but me as well moving forward. I know that my band's gonna continue with these Facebook ads as we continue to release new music and move forward with our project. If you did find this video helpful, be sure to hit the like button down below, make the little thumbs up button turn blue. It really helps out me and my channel and gets this video seen by many more people. And if you wanna stay up to date with more music related content, just like this, be sure to hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on any more of my videos. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great one.